goes without saying that wet roads are slippery roads. And the biggest single factor that we have control over in order to minimize our risk is to reduce our speed. In this first real life clip, we'll see a car at excessive speed on a wet road, but especially so on corners. There we have to reduce our speed even more than what we would under normal circumstances. In the next real life clip, what this clip is demonstrating is how to detect how much water exists on the road. And one of the best ways to tell that is to have a look at a vehicle traveling up ahead of you. In this case, we'll have a look at the vehicle in the left lane, just slightly ahead of the camera, and have a look at the water that it's spraying out, how much water is being displaced. And that'll give you a good indicator as to the depth of water that is laying on the road surface. Now we can see there's a fair amount of spray and vapor that's uh, trailing the vehicle. And because of that, that increases the chances of hydroplaning or the vehicle now starting to skid across the road surface. And that's exactly what happens here. So what is hydroplaning or aquaplaning? So the two words are synonymous. Well, what happens under normal circumstances, if you're traveling at a slow enough speed, the tire makes contact with the road surface and the water is displaced. But once that speed starts building up, then what happens is that eventually at a certain speed, the vehicle's tires lose grip with the surface of the road. So it actually is suspended in the water above the surface of the road. So it's actually riding on top of the water. Now we can think of a water skier before they start off, perhaps uh, they have their life jacket uh, lying in the water, have their skis pointing upwards. But as the tow boat or the speed boat starts picking up speed, you see that they struggle in the water until that a proper speed is reached and then they can start skiing or gliding on top of the water. And that's exactly what happens with hydroplaning. So the speed, again, is the biggest factor that would reduce uh, this phenomena from taking place. The other factor that would reduce hydroplaning or aquaplaning is the amount of tread that we have on our tires, so the depth of that tread. The greater that depth of tread is and the better uh, the tire is designed to displace the water, well, the less chance there will be of hydroplaning. But even with good tread, good tires, once we reach a certain speed, uh, the tire will be lifted off the surface of the road and start skimming along the top of the water, leading to that hydroplaning or aquaplaning effect. And we don't want to, to get into that situation because once the vehicle starts hydroplaning or aquaplaning, well, then we've got no control over the vehicle. And so you'll find that immediately uh, once the tires lift off the surface of the road, that your steering wheel becomes extremely light. And doesn't matter how much you turn your steering wheel, you've got no directional stability or control over the vehicle. And so anything can happen to your vehicle then. Just in this particular clip, I've included it because now we don't have a vehicle ahead of the camera in order to indicate the depth of water that exists on the road surface. But another very important sign or indicator is to have a look at how smooth and glossy and reflective the road surface is. So you can see it's very smooth. And if we see the poles in the reflection here, they stand out clearly, distinctly. And because of that, there's a very good reflection indicating that there's a certain depth of water that actually lays on the surface of the road. So that would increase the risk of hydroplaning once we've got a, a certain depth of water. So have a look for that sign of that uh, reflective surface, smooth, even, and reflective surface, and make sure that our speed is reduced. In this case, we'll see a vehicle coming down the left lane, and now notice that the vehicle doesn't brake, and I doubt whether it's accelerating, and neither do you see it turning its steering wheel, so it's just traveling straight along the path but it hits that speed at which it starts hydroplaning 
and goes out of control. There we go. So lost grip, and in this case, going over quite a steep embankment, so rather dangerous. So when it comes to our contact of the tires with the road surface, what we want to try and do aside from reducing our speed is to try not to add additional force other than the rolling force of the tires in contact with the road surface. We don't want to introduce additional force in the form of longitudinal force, either through braking or accelerating, and neither do we want to add additional lateral force in the direction of turning our steering wheel. So we want to try to keep our steering as straight as possible and try not to accelerate or brake too harshly. And that will reduce the risk of the tires losing that traction on the road surface. I've included this clip because especially for heavy vehicles and articulated vehicles, uh, trucks, they've got to travel a lot slower Otherwise, uh, if they hit the point where they start sliding, uh, then, the trough, then the truck will jackknife, as we'll see in this clip, and that can lead to all sorts of problems. So they're jackknifing, fishtailing, uh, but the cab jackknifing uh, with the trailer. Now, this is the last clip that we'll be looking at, the instructional clip. There's the montage section to follow. But have a look at this and see if you can determine where the problem is here. So we'll watch the clip and then I'll just stop it towards the end of the clip and we can discuss a few points. Right, so you see a number of the, the tracks sliding along this section of the road here. Now, what would contribute towards such a slippery surface? Well, as I've mentioned a few times in previous videos, where you've got water on the surface of the road, but that road is elevated from the surrounding countryside. So it might be a built-up road, and so you've got a quite a steep embankment, or it may be a bridge, as is the case here, you can see a river flowing under the bridge. So where the road is elevated, then what happens is that the wind crosses over the top of the road at a much higher speed. So because it's not impeded by the surrounding landscape, the wind is a lot stronger over the surface of the road. And that contributes towards bringing down the temperature of the water. And if that happens under the right circumstances, then black ice is formed on the road surface. Now, black ice, unlike what the name implies, is not black, but it's actually transparent, it's invisible. So one cannot easily detect if there's black ice on the road surface. And so one comes driving along, and if you hit a patch of black ice, well, it's probably one of the slipperiest surfaces that you can come across. And you would, would have noticed with these other trucks that they have absolutely no control. Uh, just start sliding wildly out of control. So be cautious where you've got wet roads. It's an elevated road, maybe a bridge, and the strong winds that would bring the temperature of the water down in order to form such black ice. But here again, the biggest contributing factor uh, to us sliding or skidding on a slippery road surface is our speed. So that's a the most important thing we can try and reduce in order to minimize our risk on the road.
please like, subscribe, and get notified.